first reading this morning is from the Pew Bible, this is found on page 502, and it's Psalm 130. I will read the odd numbers, and the congregation will please respond by reading the even numbers. Thank you. Psalm 130, page 502 in the Pew Bible. Out of the depths I cry to you, Lord. Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attended to my cry for mercy. If you, Lord, kept a record of sins, Lord, who could stand? For what would you do to us as forgiveness? So that we can with your serve you. I wait for the Lord, my whole being waits, and in his word I put my hope. Israel, put your hope in the Lord, for with the Lord is unfailing love, and with him is full redemption. He himself redeemed Israel from all of his sins. All praise be to God. Our epistle this morning is from Acts chapter 8, verses 26 through 35. In the Pew Bibles, it's on page 809. Acts 8. Verses 26 through 35, page 890 in the box. It's about Philip and the Ethiopian. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Go south to the road, the desert road, that goes down from Jerusalem, Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out, and on his way he met an Ethiopian eunuch, an important official in charge of all treasury of the Candite, which means queen of the Ethiopians. This man had gone to Jerusalem to worship, and on his way home, he was sitting in his chariot, reading the book of Isaiah, the prophet. The spirit told Philip, go to that chariot and stay near it. Then Philip ran up to the chariot, heard the man reading Isaiah, the prophet. Do you understand what you're reading, Philip asked? How can I, he said, unless someone explains it to me. So he invited Philip to come up and sit with him. This is the message of the scripture which the eunuch was reading. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shear is silent, so he did not open his mouth. In his humiliation, he was deprived of justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me please, who is the prophet talking about? himself or someone else. Then Philip began with the very passage of scripture and told him the good news about Jesus, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our gospel this morning comes to us from Luke in the 22nd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. I'll be reading Luke 22, 54 through 62 on page 857 of your view Bible. Luke 22, starting at verse 54. It's titled, Peter Disowns Jesus. Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter, Peter followed at a distance. But when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord, the Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word of the Lord had spoken to him. Before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. This is the gospel of our Lord. Settle there. 
I have much time. Only great to see you because it's early, before my other important appointments. You look tired. Your eyes are red. I've been weeping. As a soldier, I find that a sign of weakness. You are right. I'm weak. I denied my Lord when he was arrested. Then you are a slave. To Jesus Christ, Son of the living God. Ah, religious man. You are no concern of mine. As long as you acknowledge that the Emperor Tiberius is also a god, the temple leaders sacrifice a lamb daily on his behalf and say a prayer for him. Do the same and you will be safe. Good day. You don't understand. Where did the temple guards take Jesus? Ask them. I don't interfere with temple business. A maid saw that I was a Galilean too, that I was with the rabbi from Nazareth when he was captured. I have been his disciple. Oh, I know about the rabbi and his disciples. I have the report right here. Does it include the part about the guard, guard's ear? I struck him in anger. I didn't mean to. I just got a little bit carried away. Jesus healed it though, thanks be to God. That's a dangerous act out of anger at any time. The guard should have arrested you, even if the ear was healed, and I doubt that. I'm not known for patience. It was dark. I was afraid. Fear is as foolish as anger. I wouldn't last as the emperor's personal representative if I act so rashly. Oh, I know about all the rabbi's followers and his activities. We try to help people. Tell them about God the Father, the loving Creator. My staff and my spies are very efficient. I know you were once a fisherman and had quite a family business too. And then you got religious and the phrase as the phrase goes. My brothers and I had fished all night and caught nothing. Jesus came along and wanted to join us. I thought he wanted to relax and sleep. Instead, he told us to let down our nets. I almost laughed in his face. He was a carpenter. He knew nothing about fishing. So you obeyed him? Yeah, the unbelievable happened. The catch was so huge that the nets broke. I knew everything was true. He is blessed with remarkable power. Power, huh? He was lucky that the fish was plentiful. It was then that I decided to leave everything and follow the rabbi. My wife was upset. So was my mother-in-law. She had been ill for years and thought I'd lost my mind, that my income would be gone. That's a natural concern. Jesus came to see them after he prayed for my mother-in-law, she became well. Both women, both women understood my decision. I needed to learn more from him. My fishing days were over. So you left everything. That's a drastic decision and a very impetuous one too. Since that time, I've traveled many miles with the rabbi. We are a band of traveling evangelists. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We spread the message of salvation and of his new kingdom. Hey, wait a minute. A new kingdom? Emperor Tiberius has resigned, reigned for 20 years and declared no fighting, no war. How can there be a new kingdom? What kind of battle plans do you have? If you listen to him, you would understand. Jesus' new kingdom doesn't have a political boundaries. It has nothing to do with rulers like the emperor, or Herod, Herod Antipas in Galilee, or with Judea or Samaria. It is totally new, completely unique, and unexpected. Jesus' kingdom, kingdom, Jesus kingdom will rule in his believers' souls and hearts. You must be joking. People give allegiance to rulers who promise bread and entertainment. That policy was promoted by the great Caesar Augustus, and it still works. Jesus says where two or three of us are gathered in his name, he will be there too. We are brothers and sisters to each other with God as our Heavenly Father. What a dreamer. 
Do you expect to be a loving family? No jealousy, no squabbles among you? Impossible. The mother of James and John wanted her son to be next in line after Jesus. She called real, caused real friction. But Jesus would have none of that. He said we are servants. Position, prestige, and power are not a, power, a part of his kingdom. If he expects people to live for others, then this Jesus offers nothing. But people do respond. They forgive each other and show love and concern. Or even to love our enemies, even the Romans. If I believed that, I might listen to the rabbi. However, I have a complete life without your Jesus. You may think that now, but someday you may find your life quite empty. What will happen if you lose favor with the emperor? Or if your wife dies? Or your health takes a turn? Or your money diminishes, diminishes in value? Who will care about you then? I can take care of myself. There's no emptiness in that. I won't waste time on other people. Others take advantage whenever they can. You have my sympathy. I once said the same thing. But then Jesus taught me to love God and love others. That brought happiness into my heart and an inner joy that changed me. I found peace at last. Peace? The emperor handles that. Love of God, love of others, I've heard enough. Go find your Jesus if you can. He's no concern of mine. Perhaps Jesus will be your concern before the sun sets, but I must find him. Oh, why, oh, why did I deny my Lord? Judas is a strange land, and this has been a especially strange week because I've heard so much about Jesus. The rabbi from Nazareth, from Caiaphas, Herod Antipas, Pohula and Judas, Peter told me about his work and his love for others, doing good, healing, his message of love and his new kingdom. What does this all mean? Well, I don't read. Who is Jesus? So what did you hear there? A lot of today's thinking, wasn't it? People who know Jesus, know Jesus. Those who don't, oh, I get out of Jesus. It never changes. It never. It hasn't changed in centuries. The people that want to humble their hearts and believe, believe. Those that don't, won't. But this morning I want to talk about that roller coaster of faith and sin. As I said, the roller coaster. Ups and downs, highs and lows, exhilaration, and moments of fear. They all feel the roller coaster. You know, most of it on. But, you know, we don't connect it to a faith life. And that's where I'm one of those guys that just really looks at all, all, the, all the pictures. But those emotions are all a reality in being a true follower of Christ. See, in life, we have moments when we're on top. We feel God's presence. We, we feel His blessing. We know He's right there with us. Then we have the times where we start to slide. We get farther down to the pit, as the Bible puts it. We don't see God working in our lives, and we know the bottom's getting close. And that's going to hurt. And so at those times, there we think God may have abandoned us. And that's just the view that Satan wants us to have. See, because in reality... God is always hard at work with us. Making sure that we have a way that we don't have to hit rock bottom. That we can transition back up again. Just like the bottom of a roller coaster ride. Do you ever think about that? As fast and scary as you're going down and people, oh! The ride is designed to bring you back up at the bottom with no harm. It's pretty scary on the way down. We lose our breath and we 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 kind of lose track of things, don't we? But then we come back up again and it all, it all comes back. 
And it made me think, how much more would a roller coaster ride be if it was flat? I mean, imagine going to the, going to the fair and getting on a roller coaster that went around the circle like a train track. Yay! Woohoo! I mean, a flat roller coaster wouldn't have much going for it. But that's why God gives us moments in our faith that we have to grasp His power and His never ending plan of grace. Think of that. If our faith lies or just if our lives are just plain flat, would we ever have to look to God? Would we ever wonder? Probably not. No, he gives us ups and downs. So we know in the scariest moments he's with us. That he'll bring us back up again. We have to just trust him. We have to trust that he's got that transition at the bottom that's going to go up again. Because so many people lose their, lose their senses and they lose their lives by worrying about hitting bottom. You know, 90% of people don't ever really get there. They lose it on the way. You know, when we look at Jesus' life, he went through many times of joy and sorrow, didn't he? Moments where he was at the peak and moments where he was about to hit rock bottom. Now, when you look at the history of our gospel, it happens over and over again. Just a couple of them. Matthew 21, 8 through 11. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went in ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the Son of David! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. We're going to talk about that next week. But think of that. Think of that moment for Jesus. That had been an exciting moment, even for Jesus. You know, he knew better. He knew what was going to happen. But you got to admit, his heart had been just really at its top. Because Jesus was human too. And that's what he was working for, is that people would see that. But then in our gospel this morning, he hit the bottom, or close to the bottom. Luke 23, 54, Then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed the distance. Yeah. Yeah, here's Jesus now being arrested and taken away like a common thief. A common criminal. See what I mean about the roller coaster? Even Jesus was praised as the king. Hosanna the highest. And being arrested. So never think that he hasn't been through what we are, have been through. And then you look at Peter. Matthew 16, 13 through 18. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do, who do people say the Son of Man is? They replied, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. Well, but, but what about you? He asked. Who do you say that I am? And Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replies, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overcome it. Think of how big Peter had to think at that moment. Oh! The Heavenly Father talked to me. Of all people. And then this morning, Luke 22, 60 through 62, out of, our, out of our ground. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at him. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. 
before the rooster crows, the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. You know, that, that right there, how low could you feel inside? How, I mean, imagine that. We all have those looks from our parents and maybe from loved ones that made us feel totally rotten. But this was Jesus that Peter had followed for three years. And he gave him that look. And it really doesn't say what the look was about. Was it disgust? Was it, was it anger? Was it just that look? And we all know what the look was. It was all that wrapped up into one. Kind of like We never like to say, I told you so, but Jesus can say that, because he is the boss. Now Peter lived the moment for being called the rock to turn into mud, didn't he? Yeah. You would think he was at the bottom of his, bottom of his wits. But that's the roller coaster of faith. We forget the whole time that God is watching, saying, just trust me. I won't let you fall. I did it for my son, and he'll do it for you too, if you believe and trust. As I say, we can never think that Jesus has never been where we're at. We can never go, God, you don't understand. Because they've been on it too. No. I just thank the Lord for giving me that thought that the bottom of a roller coaster ride always transitions, takes us back up. It wouldn't be a roller coaster if there was no bottom of the track and we just went straight in the ground. That's the devil's plan. That's what the devil pushes. God says, I don't care how fast you're going down or how far you go down. I have a way back out. All you got to do is trust me and do it. No, the key is we stay in the seat of faith. We stay with our seat belts on and our hands on the rail. Before, you know what? It's only the ones that bail out that get, get hurt real bad. Think of it that way. Those that have the faith and when things get tough, they bail out and say, I don't care anymore. I don't believe in God. They're going to get hurt, aren't they? Because they didn't trust God for the bottom to bring us back out again. No, the inventor and operator of our, our thing we call the roller coaster of faith, he did it for a reason. As I say, it's to give us the ups and downs, the highs and lows, so we can grasp what it all means. Yeah. Living the high life, just like our grandma. Pilot says, oh, I trusted myself, I'm good. But Peter warns him, what happens when your wife dies? What happens when you lose your money? What happens when the emperor hates you? Well, we have a lot of people in our world that say, I ain't worried about that because I'm in charge. As most of you know here, things happen that you just can't expect. We've got one place to look. And that's up. So don't think you can get off the ride. Don't think you can get off the roller coaster because that's impossible too. That's what life is all about. And a life of faith is the same thing. We're going to have highs and lows. We're going to have days when we can't help but thank God we're going to have days that we look at him and say I ain't sure what you meant but just trust him till the end you'll find out the joy that he has planned because you think about those guys that get off the they get off the right at the end they're going Whoa! they've been through something they can't understand but they come off with joy yeah, I trust the Lord. He's got to figure it out. Oh, I'll tell you what, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, we thank you for 
for being our operator of our ride, this ride of life and faith and all that goes on. Because we know that you have a plan to bring us home. We don't think about that, that the roller coaster ends in heaven just like it ends on that platform. But when we get off and come into your, come into your heaven, we're going to say, whoa, that was quite a ride, but we made it. And you're going to smile and say, thank you for trusting me. I was watching the whole time. But Heavenly Father, we pray for those that bail out, that, that give up on their faith. That let themselves hit rock bottom and stay there. They don't look for their way back. Lord, we have to pray that your spirit can fill them up. We pray for those that like Pilate who, who believe that the God they make is the God that is real. As Peter said, they'll find out in the end. But Heavenly Father, help us teach those how to find the way back up. Because there's nothing when you stay in the bottom except Satan and hell and all of his evil. We need you in our lives to show us so show us how great it is. Oh Lord Jesus, continue to be our, our guide and our, our our leader to show us that you've done it and we can do it too. We just pray this all in your holy holy name. Amen. Um, um.